and welcome to this brand new podcast. Right. (laughs) What's it called? Dating what? Quarantine dating. Quarantine dating. Okay, you got to date date through the pandemic, dating through the crisis, if you can, if you, I guess, maybe you can't, but I just wanted the community to get an opportunity to talk to you specifically, Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like you're a wealth of information, and one of my favorite friends. um, You're my favorite friend. You're my favorite friend. Who thought you could like kooky nutty therapists? Like most of them are kind of kooky nutty. All of them. I know. Them. Literally. I know. So issues. Dude, let's introduce ourselves. Tell everybody about yourself because some people watching might not know a lot about you. Uh, so my name is Jennifer and I'm the owner of Aeon Counseling and Consulting. And today you can reach us for questions through text or um, direct message at 617-982-3996. That is also our referral line. If anyone is interested in uh, telehealth or virtual therapy, we are officially changing the way we're doing things for now. We're just going to see everyone telehealth until this whole thing pans out um, and probably beyond. We were doing it before, but that's not the majority of our clients. And then because this happened... Mm -hmm. Everyone had to switch over. And so I'm very grateful to have that option. We're blessed that we could even uh, stay open because of it. I know, exactly. And can they also put in a comment in the chat line if they're online watching this, right? Can't they put in? They can, yes. (laughs) They can. They can also um, submit their questions Mm -hmm. via the Zoom. Right, that's what I mean. So we're going to be managing the participants that way and also um, on the chat. And also just you can text me. I'll see it. Right. There you go. I'll be on top of it. I like that. Yeah. So welcome, everyone. This is a lot of fun for um, Jen and I. We're good friends and we're also business associates. So um, I'm different than a therapist, obviously. Uh, So I am a relationship coach. Uh, my name is Judith Jameson. I have a home office out of Middleton. Most of my clients are uh, virtual, or if they live in the area, you know, north of Boston, then I will meet with them at my home office or at their house or outside or whatever. Obviously, right now it's virtual. Nobody's coming to my home office. And so I'm a relationship coach. I work with people um, who want to find love. I'm not looking to help people get hookups. I'm looking for them to find a relationship. And so I help them with all that. And that's what we're talking about today. I'm also a marriage coach and helping helping couples stay together, especially during a difficult time like this. And then I'm also a divorce coach. And then when I'm a divorce coach, I'm helping people process out in a healthy way, but also getting them all the good resources that they're paying for with me, which is attorneys, financial planners, tax accountants, the works. But today we're talking about the date coaching because that's a great thing to work on when you're quarantined or self-isolating. The question is how? Oh. How do you work on it? Right. So, well, so the how is really easy because you have a lot of preparation work to do before you actually get out and meet people. And the most important thing to start with is yourself and being very conscientious about what you create for photos for your profile, um, what you wear, what you don't wear, what's the setting and all of that. So why don't we talk about that today? Um, the, time to, the time that you can take right now is selfies or have a friend meet you six to 10 feet away outside. Uh, profiles should have at least six pictures. That's the magic number. Uh, I know that. Yeah. So people put one picture, like a headshot, looks like a professional headshot from a business. Oh, oh, boring. (laughs) Who wants to meet somebody that just has a professional headshot in their business suit at a law firm or something? I do. I do. I'd meet them. No. Yeah. I wouldn't go for that. (laughs) People people are judging that the human nature, as you know, as a therapist, obviously, is that people are the eyes and the sensory that goes with the eyes, the heart, the brain, it's all connected. So 
people may say we're being judgmental by looking at people's pictures, but the reality is it counts, right? So you're attracted to someone or you're not. Um, you like a person in a business suit or you like the hippy dippy look and somebody you know that doesn't shower more than once a month and they live in the woods in a, in a hut. That's cool. If that's what you like, look for those pictures. Your pictures need to show who you are with no words. Um, I don't recommend putting things on there like this is my daughter's wedding. Um, here I am at my work. Here I am on a sailing trip to Australia. Oh, you know, um, it also can come across as being sort of pretentious, right? So what you want are pictures that show what you're typically doing on a work day, maybe in an evening, maybe on a weekend. So your pictures need to be varied. So, so well, time out. Are you saying that then you agree with dating apps? That you I agree with views? Oh yeah, I agree with dating apps. Oh, did I need, did, do I need to back up? We might uh, need to back all the way up. Like, do we even believe in dating apps? Do we want them? Do we think it's gonna be like Tinder all the time? Well, I don't, you know, I don't it's like, really There's a lot of hooking up culture in there. Yeah. yeah, I don't recommend Tinder. So statistically, there was a huge research project that went on by Stanford University. I read it because another friend of mine is a therapist and she got her hands on it. And it came out last year and it talked about 15 years of an incredible research project on the dating world. And they had all these technical graphs and things, but the summary of it is that the major graphs that showed how people are meeting a partner or you know someone that they're gonna date long-term mm -hmm. was like this. Um, at work, meow, through a friend, meow, I picture these like red graphs, right? Little lines, meow. Um, at a bar, meow, at a restaurant, meow. Um, at the grocery store, which is my mom's favorite advice to everybody, go hang out at the grocery store because single men have to buy groceries too, or single women. Yeah, no, go they don't. Their mothers buy it. That's Mona. Well, according to mom, hang out at the grocery store and be creepy. Um, <laughs> well, now you can't. So. You now you can't. Um, meet through relatives. Meow. Um, meet at a wedding, meet through the internet, Psh, can't even see the top of my hand. It's the only, it's like 99% of the ways that people are meeting is through the internet on websites. Every website has scammers. Every website has some sketchy people on it. Every website has predators. Every website has, you know, Ricky rapist in disguise uh, <laughs> and posers, imposters, imposters. You need to weed that out. So dating online is the way to go, but you have to do it safely. That's why I love being a date coach because I know how to keep people safe. But we can talk about that in another episode. You know, how do I keep people safe, right? I mean, I kind of want to know. You kind of want to know. How, like the process that you go through with your clients. Right. But what I want to talk about first is to give people a little piece of practical advice, which is because the online date, dating is the way to go, whether you like it or not, um, you want to be good with the first part is your profile. So forget about how we look at other people's profiles, how we find the good guys or the, or the great women. You got to back it up. The, your first thing before you even pick which websites are appropriate, the first thing you're doing is creating a profile because that's like your resume. That's what people are looking at. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to apply to IBM and you know Microsoft, um, there's a lot of things I'm going to do on the interviews, but the things I have to do up front are getting my resume and my background. I, I put on the jobs I've had, my interests, um, things that make me special, achievements, but that's kind of what an online profile is. So the first part of the profile that I wanted to give today as a tip is your pictures. And pictures tell a story, not to be ignorant. Um, so, here, here are some tips on pictures. So you need at least five or six pictures, photos, okay? Um, you know, if you love that picture of, of yourself, you know, standing next to a fence, that's great. But there's probably more to you that you can show in more pictures, okay? If you have a dog or a cat, people have mixed feelings about that. I actually think that it's good to have a picture of your pet, one of the pictures, 
in it because it says, oh, I love dogs. You know, if I were looking at your profile and you had one of them with your dog, Jen, I'd be so excited. They'd be like, see, I, I'm a dog person. If somebody had like 25 parrots in the background, I'd be like, eh, not so much. Or if they were holding their little iguana, eh, not so much. But there were other people, other people around that. Right. Yeah. So the first one is if you have a pet and you're passionate about like you love cats. Well, if I was single right now looking at guys and they had like one or two cats in their pictures, I'm definitely allergic to cats. So that's not going to work for me. Um, the, um, aside from like pet pictures, um, put a picture of you at work. So if I'm a vet, I don't really want to tell everybody where the veterinarian, uh, you know, where the, where the animal hospital is. Yeah. Uh, but I want to show a picture of me in my element. What do I do every day for work? So if I'm a vet, I think a great thing would be a picture of me, um, you know, with like standing in front of some cages, like where they keep the animals, or you could show a picture of me um, in a lab coat, um, you know, holding two cats. So it says, you know, and you could put a caption on it, you know, me and some of my patients or something funny like that. Um, if I'm a lawyer, I'm not going to show myself standing at court. Okay. Um, but I might do something funny with that. If I'm, a, if I'm a, um, personal injury attorney, I might find a picture, a funny cartoon or something, um, that portrays, you know, like an intersection with lots of cars all messed up and then put my, put my, impose my, my picture in there. So it shows people that like, it's kind of funny. I work with people that like, it's not funny that they have car accidents, but that that's kind of like part of my work. So if you can do something interesting or funny with a picture that portrays what you do for work, that would be great. The other thing is people connect with their interests. And that's a topic for another day because just because you put skiing on doesn't mean that a non-skier would not want to go out with you. But if you have a passion, you want to portray that and show people that you like to ski or um, you like to skate. It's kind of hard to take a selfie when you're doing your little figure eights out on a pond, but you can have a friend take a picture of you doing that. Yeah. Um, you, you would want to show yourself standing next to your bike. I mean, it sounds kind of goofy, uh, but nothing says I like to bike more than somebody, um, you know, in their pan mass challenge outfit, right? <laughs> standing next to their bike. And what it says is two things. It says two things. Actually, it says three things. When I see a picture like that, it gets me excited. I'm not a big bicyclist, you know, but it says to me, this person is outdoorsy. This person likes bicycling. This person is into the charity because you don't just bike because you like to bike for the Pan Mass Challenge. It's freaking Heartbreak Hill on a bike. It's two days of extensive bicycling. Yeah. If I see that some man or woman is in Pan Mass gear, I think that's cool. But not everybody cares about charities. For me, that's, that's my passion. Like my passion is I spend more time giving back to society, I think, than I do billable hours. Um, people that give to the Pan Mass Challenge, uh, I couldn't think of a greater, of course there are other ones, but I can't think of, I can't think of a, a charity and an organization that is greater. There are some that are equally wonderful. So that is going to speak to a lot of people that look at your profile. Um, the other thing is, if you have another interest, like um, you like to hike, well, for goodness sakes, get a picture of you on a, on a hiking trail, wearing your hiking gear, and turning around at the camera. Don't just, don't just show a picture of a path in the woods. You want to show yourself on a path, okay? Tip number 100. So deep. I feel like the pictures that I've used in the past have just been... Yeah. Drinking with my friends. Right. Okay. So that's my next one. Don't put pictures with other people. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so you're, 
personal Facebook page is great because you and I are friends and I love watching your travels and things. But when I'm looking to meet, you know, for example, if I'm looking to meet a guy, I don't really want to see a picture of him with five buddies because first of all, I probably don't know which one is him. Okay. Um, and I really, I'm then not you interested. Like his buddy, then you like his buddy and then it's like, Ooh. Okay. And that's a whole other issue. We, I, we could do that. We could talk about that later because Sometimes you do go on a date and you like somebody's friend better than you like your date. That, it happens. It um, I, can, I can coach you through that awkward moment. Wow, thank you. <laughs> yeah. You always have your phone number, you know, right on the back of your hand so you can show it to the friend. Um, no, sometimes the friends will reach out to you after meeting you and it's just like, hmm, disrespectful. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty sketchy. That's sketchy, yeah. That's sketchy. But honestly, um, I don't want to see a I don't want to see a wedding picture of some guy with his elderly parents and his adult children and you know his lovely daughter that's getting married and you know I'm like no I don't want to see your whole family I don't even know you yet I just want to see five or six pictures not twenty I want to see five or six pictures that look like you that I can see you I don't want you to be a little speck in the background like oh I like to hike. And you're standing right. at the top of Mount Everest, right? And a yeah. passing by helicopter took a picture of you. That's ridiculous. The point of the pictures is to show people who you are and in different environments and different clothing, right? So like if you only wear blue jeans and t-shirts, okay, uh, every picture you're in a blue jeans and a t-shirt, but you're gonna be showing different things. So you're sitting in a cafe, having a cup of coffee, they can tell it's a cafe, but there's not a lot of people around because then it gets like, it's a confusing picture. Uh, you're drinking a cup of coffee at an outdoor cafe um, in your jeans and t-shirt. You're, um, you're uh, sitting on a bench next to a lake because you love the outdoors and you own a lake house up at Lake Winnipesaukee. So you show yourself with a beautiful lake behind you and you're sitting and you're in your jeans and t-shirt. Um, Wow. Yeah. You, uh, you, you bike for Pan Mass Challenge. Do not wear your jeans and t-shirt. You will get them caught up in that little bike gear in no time. Don't recommend that. But um, you have a dog. Okay. So you show yourself close up, not way over there by the house. You show yourself kind of close up, holding your dog or petting your dog, or you have a cat, you're holding your cat. Um, but you're this close, like you and I are in these pictures. You're not like in the other room um, and you're not standing with five friends. So it's not like five people and a cat, it's stupid. I don't care about your friends yet. I don't wanna, in fact, here's the great thing. I love it when people show a picture of themselves and they white out all the other people. When I have, yeah, when I have guys who I'm date coaching and I see pictures like that, I'm like, okay, hello. What idiot is going to post a picture of himself clearly at a festival or a bar and he's like, you know, it's dark in the background and what's the problem? I'm going to tell you what the problem is. You start blacking out five pictures. I, I don't see these women's faces, but I know that they're women. Right. I'm like, I don't feel good about you feeling like your only picture that you're capable of taking at age, let's be crazy, 25 plus. Uh, you know, don't recommend Match.com for 15-year-olds. If you're 25 years old and you can't get a couple of selfies or have, have those women get off of you and stand over there with your phone and take a picture of you, there's a whole other issue going on here that, you know, a whole lot of, whole lot of not right. So well, speaking of not right, then yeah. I guess maybe we have differing views on selfies because I can't stand people who take selfies. Well, a lot of people take selfies all the time. I agree. Right, thank you. That's a multiple times a day situation. And right. that is actually, according to the DSM-5, they've been trying to categorize it as pathology because nobody's trying to look at your face that many times right. a day. And how, how different could it be? Right. But for example, if you're trying to showcase something behind you, then, uh, then I certainly agree with the selfie status. Or if you're going to take a selfie with other people, which right. is the opposite of what you just said. Don't use these pictures for your online dating profile, which right. I also wanted to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Which ones do you approve of? 
Which one of what? Which one of these dating, online dating applications oh, okay. do you feel are better than the others? Well, I think that there's um, pros and cons to every online dating website. Mm. Um, I know people that have met on Tinder and they didn't use it for hookups. So go figure. I know people that have met on Christian Mingle, but um, a lot of that, if, if you have a faith base, the problem with that is there are people that are posing as having your faith and they don't. So it's kind of like, well, you can go to like catholicgirls.us or something if you want, but there's going to be a lot of people that are fake. So you're a little bit risky on that when you get, when you hone in like, you know, <laughs> farmers for farmers or, you know, <laughs> farmers dating farm girls. I don't know. It's there was one that I know of you. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and that's one of my favorites. Only for entertainment factors. Um, <laughs> right. you know. uh, but Match.com is still one of the better ones, only because they've been around for the longest amount of time. Um, they have a lot of traction. When people that are new to the dating scene, especially if they're my clients that just went through a divorce two years ago and now they're kind of ready to date, um, people that are new to the scene um, don't know about all these other ones okay um so match.com is pretty good uh eHarmony takes so long to create a profile it's hard to believe that people are lying on there and that there are predators but it's true it amazes me that someone would spend six hours to create their profile and be matched up and still be like you know ricky rapist or something but they're out there um, ricky rapist gets a special yeah. shout out in this podcast today i know I know that's always been my my term. My my son even uses it because he grew up with it. I'm like my you know, favorite population to deal with. Right. They, yeah. Good clients for you. Um, so I think one of the things to remember out of the gates is that there is no safe website. There is there is no foolproof way to date. Um, the reason why I like doing the date coaching is because um, first I get your profile up and running. Um, revealing your interests and things that you like to do without revealing like where you work and like people you hang out with and things like that. Um, I always like it when we find out later on that a couple of the pictures with the person that I have a client dating, uh, we find out later that um, the women in those pictures were actually ex-girlfriends and not their sister like we assumed. So you see a picture with a younger woman and you think, oh, that must be his little sister that's so cute oh <laughs> it's not no. it's often an ex-girlfriend it's often yeah. An ex -girlfriend, yeah. yeah so i think having your profile be safe but fun and to reveal your interests um is important and uh but you do you do need to know that there's no there is no foolproof uh dating app out there and none of them are you know a whole lot better than others um you know plenty of fish people like that uh match.com eHarmony if you want to spend six hours creating your profile and then they match you with people that they think you know they've got a whole science behind theirs but um, <laughs> oh, God. You know, yeah yeah the guy the guy that the founder of eHarmony actually put a lot of scientific research into creating his website as opposed to slapping something up that says, you know, men and women have at it. You know, swipe. You there's no swiping. You pay? You think what? people should, should pay for dating? Like to invest in a good I do. date? I, I think that, um, you know, you can try the free, right? There are free trials and whatnot. Um, but it's typically... It, you get a, you get a better quality with the paid and hey jess <laughs> look at that jess is on she's connecting to the audio uh, uh, welcome there you go yeah do you know jess i sure do <laughs> yes i do yes welcome 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 um, yep. You can join either by having your video or just the audio and you can ask questions in general Whoa. Uh, I, I think people like are I'm trying on, to. I feel like I'm on the David out. Letterman uh, tram ride. Remember those? I feel like <laughs> I just got on a roller coaster. <laughs> well, welcome. Um, can you hear us? 
Don't you have to unmute her as the host? No, no, she can unmute herself. I just muted everyone in the beginning so that way we don't have that crazy feedback as soon as people show up. Okay. Just, All right. trying, just trying to figure out the Zoom thing. Ooh, Jess is here. Yep. Welcome, yes. welcome. Oh, I think she's just having a hard time connecting. But either way, you can submit your questions in writing if that's easier. Right. Um, Down below in the chat chat box. Oh, let me actually check check it because if I don't do that, uh, it would pop up. We'd see it. Hey. Okay. Hold on. Let me just. Hey. Write your questions. Ay 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 ay. Oh my God, I we're, just we're got it here. Oh, we have. There she is. Hello. Hi. Hi beautiful. <laughs> Good morning. Whoa. I love the background you have. That's so awesome. <laughs> it took me at least two days. Are you screening your house? Minimum, minimum. I'm in my house, but you can't see my house. You can only see my office. <laughs> right. It's looking Ooh. good. Which is closed at this time, but, <laughs> but it's my office. <laughs> yeah. yep. Anywho, we're talking about dating and potential dating apps. Yeah. But during quarantine times, a, we feel like we can do the online dating. You still have to get to know people before you meet up with them anyway. So why not use the next eight to 12 weeks? <laughs> to meet somebody on a <laughs> to, to Just chat with people. Just chatting and the use of FaceTime. Or I guess Zoom relationships, although I don't think Zoom is very like sexy. Yeah. It's not to new people, but um, we are looking at ways that people can still get connect um, mm -hmm. because I think people are also very scared and it feels like the end of times and everyone's like, who's going to be my apocalypse partner? Right. <laughs> well, that would be your plant or your cat for now. Yeah. Um, well, so during this particular time, um, once you get your profile up and you start, you know, hunting and pecking and other people are hunting and pecking for you, um, that this is a good time to take the time to do that. But, um, one of the things that we recommend in the date coaching world, um, is that you chat back and forth through the website, you know, through the dating app for, you know, a week or two, um, and then take it to the next. I can't hear you. Look at that little that baby cat. You no, know, there's a picture. That's a good picture for your <laughs> dating apps. Uh, unfortunately, I'm in a relationship, so this podcast doesn't benefit me. But right. here's the thing. That's an example of what you just you're talked about. Dating. You're still dating. So how do you maintain social distance while also being intimate? What has been your experience? Good question. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like I'm, I'm taking that social distancing serious at the house. <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to. We're supposed to. No, I mean, whatever. I once you're, once they're living together, you're crazy. infected. Say it again? That if you're living together, then you're infected. I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I see it. Right, right. And, and so we live in such a small apartment, too. It's not, it's like, even if we try to social distance, how? <laughs> Right. Lock yourself in the bathroom or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I wonder if it's affected people's like sex lives. I've, I wonder if it, if I think it really has a lot. Chill. Mm, I don't think so because I think if people are living together, they're not distancing within, if you're married or whatever, especially if you have kids, you can't, everybody has to be helping with the kids. You can't tell a six month old with social distancing, you know, get your own bottle. Um, and you can't tell a two-year-old, don't come near me. You know, you have to stay six feet away. So oh I think gosh, we're going to see more. Kids really carry the diseases. <sighs> yeah, more, I think more families are going to get it. Um, oh, Molten and his wife have symptoms. It was online. I saw it on last night. You oh mean the God, Chinese scary. flu that he talked about? From the Chinese that he said? Oh, did Seth Molten say that? Yep. Wow. Nope, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, that was bad. That's not cool. He's been getting a lot of crap for that. I know he's a good guy. It's just I am surprised. Yeah. Well, he's, um, he and his wife have symptoms. Uh, Low-grade 
uh, fevers and aches and stuff like a flu, sore throat, no cough, you know. So great. It's just a matter of time before we all have it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So they're self quarantining and, um, some people from Shaw's and Market Basket have come down with it now too. No surprise there. Oh, I mean, I feel, better. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad for them because they're really at risk. But hey, Jens, um, why don't we ask Jess since she's on? Did you meet your significant other by a, an app, or did you try any of the apps? And what did you think of them? No, I think I suck online. <laughs> Let's start there first. Okay. Um, I am a very like face-to-face -face human. Mm -hmm. when it comes to almost anything in my life, which I am something that I want to change and I want to be more part of the digital life. Um, but I, I, I met my significant other at a club. It was not online. I didn't talk to people online. The only time that I talk to people online is after I already know them. Like I'm not sparking new relationships online, which is something that I do want to start and be more into. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. It's like the anti-Judith mode. <laughs> <laughs> no, it makes perfect sense because that's kind of, I mean, that's how we were doing it before and that's kind of how it's supposed to be. I know that people always say like, oh, if you meet them at a bar or in a club, it's never going to go anywhere. I don't that's know. BS. I know people who met by mistake in a bar and then all of a sudden right. and now they're married. Right. I mean, a lot of it is just, um, you know, the right place at the right time. People have met on airplanes. People have met you know, at a bar, people have met at a club, people have met, you know, taking a class together. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, people have met being stuck in an elevator for six hours while the New York fire department tries to get them out of the Marriott elevator that keeps getting stuck. Just saying. My newest, latest method of meeting people has just been uh, during online fighting. <laughs> when you're standing up for social justice, all of a sudden you'll see that most people are going to come at you and they're going to attack and they're going to call you names. But then every once in a while you see this one little flickering light and it's, you know, one person trying to be like, actually that's not how it is. And then they'll try to back you up the best yep. they can in the middle of being attacked by multiple trolls. Uh, and then magic happens and it gets very sexual very quickly. There you go. Why is that? I don't know. There's something about social justice. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Yeah. Is Maybe that, it's just, you know, two people having this fiery passion for a topic. Yes. <laughs> That's my favorite way of vetting people now. It's like, you know, can you hold a conversation online about right. abortion? <laughs> right. Or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever topic. That's intense. <laughs> I have to do something crazy like feminism. Like, can you talk about that though? Right. So probably, so probably one of your online dating pictures, Jen, should be, you know, you standing in a picket line or something to really. Like, <laughs> I have one of those. Actually, like the use how like far this. can I take it? I have full blown. Well, maybe I shouldn't use those actually. <laughs> yeah. Right. But I mean, the thing is, you know, you're really, you're really trying to show like where your passion is, where your, um, where your interests are through a picture because pictures tell a story and yeah. people aren't going to read your 25,000 paragraphs of, you know, who you are. They're not going to read all that unless they click through the pictures and see that the pictures are good. The other thing with pictures that we didn't even talk about is what about the people that don't put a picture up? And eh, then they don't get anything. No. Who wants to read that? You know, so people are like, oh, I don't look good. I don't like my pictures. It's like, yeah, well, get over yourself. Like, you know, I've, I work with stylists. I work with makeup artists. I work with hairdressers. I work with, you know, hair stylists. Um, I work with people that do personal, you know, um, like, um, you know, whatever you call it, like personal styling, and they'll help you. Um, I'm also really good at it because I'm sort of a dedicated follower of fashion, might I add. <laughs> Go, you know. You get a uh, relationship advice and a makeover. And you get a makeover. And you get a makeover, right. Perfect. Occasionally I can I can just by just by osmosis, I can do a matchmaking also because I have clients and you know, I think the key thing getting back to like I don't know, because Jess, you came in a little bit 
after we talked about this, but one of the things we talked about is, you know, Jen was saying, do we really even need online dating? Why are people doing this? And, you know, what's the point? The point is that, first of all, there's no perfect mate. There's no, well, we know that, but there's no, my number one, there's no, um, this is my soulmate. That's like my pet peeve. Like I should have like a sign that says soulmate, a circle with it, cross mm -hmm. through it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if that was true, if you were looking for your soulmate, then that basically negates everybody that had a breakup, that thought that they met their right person, or everyone that went through a divorce, it would say, so they're screwed because they allegedly married their soulmate. Um, so I tell it people, also, like, yep. It also brings it back to like 50 years ago when everybody dated people around them. So then that's your soulmate. You know what I mean? Like it, that doesn't have any foundation. <laughs> Right. Dating people around you is just lazy. So, you know, my feeling is when I'm date coaching, I take over the wheel. This is the fun part, right? So when I'm date coaching someone, I take over the wheel. I, you know, if they already have a, a profile, I take it down and I recreate it. Um, I give them all kinds of instructions on their photos and things. I also work with photographers. You know, you can hire a professional ph photographer for $200 to get some really good pictures. Just, you know, be near, be near the outdoors so that some pictures are indoors and some are outdoors, you know, just get you started. But the key is I cast the net. So let me talk about three of my success stories. So three people that I divorce coached, three different people, um, a guy and two women, just for example, because I went to all of their weddings last year. Um, what they had in common was they were, you know, coachable. So I don't work with someone that's not coachable. If someone wants to do it their way, then I'm not doing it. Yeah. Um, I always say to people, well, how's that working for you? Well, it's not. You need a coach because it's not working for you, right? Um, you can keep trying the same things over and over, but because that's not can your- Can I ask you a question? Yeah. How would, how would somebody go about looking for this help? Um, having the courage to even like go on a dating app or whatever, because at the end of the day, I feel like people aren't doing it and posting photos or anything like that is because they're scared they, or they, they're not ready or they don't know what they want. So like, it's like really confusing and overwhelming to them. So they're like, oh, I'm not going to do that mm -hmm. when they could, they should do it because it'll actually probably benefit them a lot because they'll right. see, they'll probably see more of themselves than they have already. Because right. when you're looking for somebody, you start understanding yourself, you know? Right. So, you know the reason why I do what I do is because I didn't have me in my past. Um, I've been through two divorces. I'm now remarried for the third time. So that makes me pretty much an expert in divorce, marriage, and dating. I also, <laughs> hey, right? Yeah. I also, yep. I also used, um, dating services for my first and second marriages. Um, they weren't necessarily, um, bad choices. We just had life circumstances that came up that we weren't able to handle on our own. And I would say that it's because both of my ex-husbands would not go to marriage counseling. Uh, and when they finally did, I was already checked out. I'm like, yeah, you're like five years too late. Like you can't do that just because I told you I filed for divorce. Well, that's actually a common reason why people come to couples counseling is to decide, do we even want to right. either get married or do we even want to get a divorce? Most right. of the time, nine times out of 10, when they're coming in thinking about divorce, the answer is hell yeah, get a divorce. The answer is Absolutely usually yeah. get a divorce. Right. So you can pass those people right over to me and I'll get them all fixed up for that. But, but I think to, to Jessenia's yeah. question is that I think there's just a lot of people who are not ready for a relationship and you have to be actually ready and want it. That's what I was going to say. And there's people who just don't want it. They don't want a relationship. They have no interest in intimacy. It's actually painful for them to have to try. And so it's, that's, uh, that's not worth it. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I mean, let's be honest. How many times have we said, yeah, you just shouldn't have had kids. You know, having kids isn't a given. Not everybody's a good parent. Not everybody's a great kid. Um, you know, not everybody should get into a car and drive. Some people, you could take them to driver's ed for 50 years and they still suck. It's the same thing with, so it's the same thing with dating. Um, you know, not everybody's good at dating. Like Jen just said, not everybody's good with intimacy. And, you know, when I take on a client, I tell them, I'm like, you're investing in this because you want to be with someone and I'm going to define what that is for you. So you don't chicken out later on. 
right? Because then that's a waste of my time and my and your money. I'm not looking to rape and pillage you financially. And I have other people that could use my services. So don't waste my time. You know, um, I don't take somebody that's 21 and never had a date before because, you know, they're not, they're going to be like so incapable. You know, most of my clients have tried dating um, and they're not good at it. Doesn't mean that they ever got dating married. younger. They're what? You mean dating younger men or younger women? Young, like my clients aren't usually 20, 21, right? right. Because those, because I tell them just live your life at this point. Like you don't have to have a steady boyfriend or girlfriend when you're, you know, trying to get your master's degree or something. So I, I'm kind of like the anti-date coach for people, you know, say 24, 25 and under. Um, but what I wanted to share was, so these three clients that I had, I date coached them four to five years ago. Uh, I mean, I divorce coached them. And then when I date coached them, a couple starting like a couple, a few, like two to three years ago, um, I cast the net wide. So I said, the first thing you need to know right out the gates is I am not going to put in a 30 mile circumference here on match.com. That's not how it works because you're perfect. Nah, that's not a good word. Your good match, pardon the pun, right now may live in Chicago. Your really good like synergy with the right man or woman may be living in Dallas, Texas right now. But if you limit yourself to Boston to Haverhill, right. or you say, I only want Southern Maine, and I'm certainly not going up as far as Canada, well, you know what? You, you can't be my client because that I always say to them, that's why you're not meeting someone. So the three people that I went to weddings for, this is very interesting. So um, last July, um, two people met. He was in Maine. She lived in Beverly, the North Shore. Um, the second couple, the first guy that she went out with lived in Iowa. And she dated him for a year and a half. So they started out slow. They were just emailing and texting and then they got on the phone. And then, um, you know, a couple of months into it after they'd done FaceTime, she went out there, stayed safe. Cause we don't know if he's like, you know, right. Yeah. We don't know if he's a creep. So, uh, you know, uh, the best predators are really good at what they do, which is why people say, I knew that guy. He was the nicest guy in the neighborhood. Yeah, I know. Well, what goes on behind closed doors? Like, right. Yeah. I thought Jeffrey Dahmer was the best looking guy around at the time. And who right. knew? Like eating his dates. What the hell? Like, who knew? You know? Oh, yeah. No. And people will back him up. Oh, he's yeah. so nice to me. Right. Okay, well, just because he was nice to you doesn't mean he was nice to me. Right. Or, oh, to or he was psychologically demented. Yes and no. Uh, that was pretty premeditated murder in my mind. But this is why you need a date coach because it's not your mom. It's not your friend. I have, I have like security antenna on, right? So I'm like your mom, but I'm not. I'm like your best friend, but I'm not. And so for me, I'm looking at it like in a loving way, but in a concerned way. And so I give advice that your stupid friends are giving you the opposite of, right? Um, this uh, client, she dated this guy for about a year and a half, almost two years. And then they just had some issues with um, sort of, uh, family backgrounds. I'll, I'll just say that like his family, he had a really controlling mom and some different things going on. So the decision was made to break up with him, which is really hard because, um, you know, when you've been dating somebody for over a year, you're kind of invested, right? And so she made the decision to break up and move on. Then we're back to match.com. Now we spread the net out and she meets, she sees a guy and she's reaching out to these people, right? That's what we're doing. We're reaching out. We're not waiting for guys to hit on these women. We're not waiting for women to be hitting on my client's post. Like that's gonna happen. But our main concern is you take, we take over the wheel. We're not gonna wait for Mr. or Mrs. Wright to come pick us, we're gonna actively try to pick your Mr. or Mrs. Wright. I like that. Uh, so the second person who she's now married to as of October lived in New Jersey. And his first reaction is when she said hello or whatever, she said, I forget what we wrote, but she's, he's like, you do know I live in New Jersey, right? She goes, yeah. And I also know that, um, you know, that the partner for me could be outside of Massachusetts. 
So you so, are for like part-time long distance relationships that have the potential of not being long distance necessarily. Yeah, but you don't stay long distance and not meet the person for six months. You've got to meet them at the two month mark and you have to make the assumption. You have to assume that because you haven't met them yet, this may not be Mr. or, Ms. or Mrs. Wright. So you do not go, you do not go mono we mono here. You keep dating, dating, dating other people because you don't need to. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah. keep dating. <laughs> so here's the other secret. I don't let my clients see the first 20 dates ever again because men and women suck at engaging and disengaging. And most this of is the part that really interests me from what you do, because sure. when you talked about this before, people don't I, like it. I, I do like it. I love the idea of having to attach and then being like, you know what? Detach, see what happens. Right. Not to be cruel. No, nope. but because nobody's attached at the hip like that. And you need to learn how to live without, without someone first. Right. And mm -hmm. most, most, um, people that are out there looking to date, you know, let's be honest, they don't want to stay on these apps for long. They're kind of like, ugh, like kind of what Jess was saying, you know, I don't like this, but I know I have to do it, but I'm really hopeful that I'm going to meet someone soon. And I always say to people, okay, back up little puppy like that. That's going to get you into trouble because now you're going to settle for someone that seems pretty good and you're going to stop seeing other people. And time and time again, when my clients do that, they always say, Oh my gosh, you were right. You know, um, if you ever need a testimonial, let them, I'll, I'll talk to your potential clients and say, listen to coach Judith because every single time when they meet somebody early on, they're like, I have a really good feeling about this. I really don't want to keep dating other people. Or a lot of times like the men will pressure women, you know, well, how are you feeling about this? We've been out three times. And I said, you need to be telling these people, first of all, if you've already gone through the first 20, with the first 20, you're gonna to say to them, just so you know, I'm, I'm just like new to this and I'm just getting my feet wet. So I'm not gonna start attaching and seeing you like, you know, three times a week. So once but they know, they you, know that- When you say that men rush women, are you talking about like, oh, we've been out three times, so oh, yeah. there must be sex. Yeah, so where do we- where do we, true. Right? And so where yeah. do you stand? Well, you're standing in a field with like 50 other potential guys. Like, you know, I'm not going to settle down quickly because, you know, I'm new to this and I'm not sure exactly which person is going to feel like the best fit. Very often the person that's the best fit isn't the person is, isn't at all like the type of person that you've dated before or that you think you like. So, um, I like my perfect example is I had a woman that, um, you know, she was really into like, you know, hard rock and stuff like that and like Boston clubs and things like that. And I said, okay, just remember, duly noted, write it down. On this day, Coach Judith said, mm -hmm. I'm going to date some people that are a little bit different and a little bit out of your comfort zone, but I'm looking for certain qualities that I think fit yours. I'm looking for um, a background that's similar to yours. So like pretty woman is a myth. It's a movie. Okay. So, you know, Really rich guys aren't usually dating prostitutes. So I'm not saying my clients are prostitutes. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'm just saying. Actually, I no, they date them, but they don't marry them. Maybe a little bit. They date them, but they don't marry them. I have seen a little bit, yes. Right. They date them, but they don't marry them. So I say, look, yeah. with all due respect, if your whole family comes from a line of Dunkin' Donuts cashiers, like they, the VP of Microsoft is probably not going to see a connect with you. They've got a different lifestyle. They grew up in a different lifestyle. They have different priorities. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of crazy things with their money that may not even align with like what you do with what you have. You have to look for similar qualities and um, cultural backgrounds to a certain degree. I agree and disagree with that. Because yeah. um, I do believe that you have to be on the same kind of level to even just be compatible. But Level I, of I do feel like I've, I've dated people that had higher, you know, so I don't know careers or right. lifestyle than me. And we still connected and, and we were able to really like enjoy each other even though we were from different places. Yeah, but, but you're not married to them right now, right? No, I'm not. Yes, I love Judith. I'm this very is why she says it like that. 
But wait a minute. But Jasenia, remember. But I don't know, but I've I've seen relationships that have like flourished from things like that. Aren't that many just, people maybe, that are still married twenty years later that had those huge differences? And I'm also talking about not financial. Their their uh, their, their mindset. Their backgrounds, right? Their backgrounds. So similar backgrounds. You know. Uh, you know. So like when I think of pretty woman, I think of like you know broken poor on the streets with you know an executive that probably owned his own plane um you know there's such a difference there that when you when Somebody you really want to be in the podcast with us right now really? like, you know, here yeah if you're gonna be in it just be in it come here <laughs> oh, right? oh, is that the dog yeah. yeah he just made a, a quick appearance yeah right so, so in, so when you look at the statistics of people who are married, stay married, people that get divorced and whatnot, the common thread that they're keep they're they're keeping together, you're like bouncing over there. What's that? It's because my dog is in constant movement, <laughs> and he's shaking the table to the point where you I can't see me in a stable manner. <laughs> I saw that. I saw that. Um, so, you know, yes, are there exceptions to every rule? Absolutely. Is every rule black and white? Absolutely not. Are rules meant to be broken? Yes. But there's a reason why, um, you know, farmers date farmers or, you know, and it, you know, a city girl from Chicago is probably not going to last in a marriage when she moves out to Iowa on a cornfield um, because she's got a different lifestyle. She's from a different lifestyle. Um, her family is very different, you know, um, those kinds of when you add up all the differences that's the that's the thing you can have different incomes i'm not saying that but the general background you know oh i see the more the background than anything yeah right it's sort of like your general background and your family's values and your values you know like people get into trouble over finances um uh, my family and my husband's family are big savers um I personally am a bit of a spender, but I feel like I don't spend all of it, but you know, um, but we come from backgrounds of, um, uh, balance, balance with finances. Other people live on the edge. They don't care. It's like, I make 200,000 a year and I spend 199,000 a year and I, I put a thousand dollars up. We lost Jess. Did we lose her? Oh, maybe she'll be yeah. back. She'll be back. Um, but that's what I'm saying is things like that. How do you and your family look at, you know, men and women in the family? How do, you know, how do you and the guy that you're with look at roles in a family? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make it bad that, that somebody really likes to have, a, would, would like to have a stay at home mom for the values of stay at home moms. It doesn't make it bad, but it makes it different. And you and I, I can say for one would be like, I respect that, but I need to get out and I, yeah. I need a career. So there are women out there for you, but it wouldn't be me. And that's when you cut it off, you know, but you would see some of that in the, in a, in a, in, in a well-written profile, they're going to see that, that you like to, you would maybe be up for kids, but you also, you value your career and being out there and being active. Um, and, and hopefully you could see some of that in the profiles that you're looking at. But those are the kinds of deeper conversations that you're going to have on the phone or in FaceTime. Those are not chat. That's not chat conversation. But th th those are the things that you're trying to, you get, that you're trying to like discover. But that's why you can't take the time to say, oh, I'm going to keep talking to Bob because I really like him and I need to see where this goes and I need to learn more about him. But now you just put all your other dates and your potential dates on hold because you have a feeling about this person, right? Yeah. And now all these other people that could be way better matches, you put them on hold because you're being impatient with the process. And, you know, that's a great disservice because Mr. Right for you in the month of March, you're still giving somebody else all your time through the month of May. A really good fit for you. He met somebody else in April because you didn't stay out there looking and looking and looking. So, you know, you're fishing and fishing and fishing. Um, and you've got to up the numbers, right? So it's kind of like, 
if I was looking for a job right now, I wouldn't send out one resume. I'd send out 50. Like when people are looking seriously for a job, they get on LinkedIn, they go to the, you know, the um, Career Services Center. Of course, they can't do that now, but they probably have ways to do it online. Um, I use different, different ways to, to do my job search, and I have to be dedicated to saying that I'm going to do this every day. Yeah. Like every day, I'm going to send out 10 resumes. Yeah. Because you know, you send out 2,000 resumes, and you may get two interviews, and two of those may not be good jobs. Hmm. So now you're back to zero and you sent out 2000 resumes. It's the same thing with looking for a partner. You've, it's a numbers game. If you go out there and you just say, I'm going to pick three, three cute guys. And I'm just going to focus on the three, three, three cute guys. You're not going to get anywhere because you've limited, you limited it to, um, you know, Boston, a guy in Boston, a guy in Wellesley and a guy in Haverhill. Right. And now you're hoping what? That sounds amazing. Yeah, right? Yeah. But the thing is, once you get to know them, all three of them could be eh, Yeah, be for real. More likely than not. Yeah. Right. It's more likely than not. And now you wasted three to six weeks trying to trying to tease out those three guys. You see what I'm saying? And do you You could have been having six guys a week that you talked to. Weed them out, weed them out, weed them out. Do you want people to detach right away or do you want them to kind of keep them in the background? Just like, okay, well, we dated. Maybe let's see if we still feel this way about each other in a couple months. Yeah, you can do that. So with the first 20 dates, what I'm telling people is you can't see them again because I need you to keep out there and go with this numbers theory, okay? Because the theory okay. works, right? Mm -hmm. So if I said to you, if I let you say to me as your coach, I really like this third guy, then we're just like hoping and praying that that third guy that you're now going to focus on works out, right? Mm -hmm. If you went on a job interview with IBM and you said, I think it's going to be good, I think it's going to be good, you would never just sit there and stop sending out resumes. You would follow through, get some more interviews, yeah. but you would keep sending your resume out. That would be stupid to say, oh, I really want this job. And now I'm not going to focus on anything else. Like that's why people aren't meeting people because they restrict themselves too soon. That sounds very logical. It works. I just went to three weddings. I just went to three <laughs> weddings. Um, at what point then of meeting 20 new people and going out with 20 new people and that's 20 whole dates and that's going to be 20 different restaurants well, or the same if you're going to be a baller, but oh, uh, your first dates are not are not hair, big hairy deals. They are short coffee dates. Short coffee dates is what you want us to have. Okay. Yep. You are not investing a lot of time or money with someone that is not Mr. or Mrs. Right. This is a numbers game. This is like you would not go to IBM and spend five hours on an interview. Um, knowing that there's a chance you're not going to get it because there's like 50 other people that they're, that they're going to have in. And that's why IBM isn't going to meet with you for five hours. They have these interviews set up because the next day they these, these poor people have to meet with candidate number two, you know? Yeah. So it's a numbers game and, and you're doing two things. You're practicing how to date and you're practicing how to be aware of spotting things that work and don't work. Yeah. And actually, the third thing is that the person that you didn't necessarily think you had as much in common with from interests, you actually find out that even though they do something totally different than you, like they go horseback riding or they like to, you know, they like country western music, you find out that you like so much about them that you'd actually want to go country western, country western line dancing because you're crazy about this person. But if you looked at that's the profile, what you're saying, you do it for them because that's what they like. Well, I'm saying that once you meet someone, you are when you get into this dating mode, you're exposing yourself to lots of different interests and things out there that you might not have done. So you're you're learning more, and you're also, um, you know, you're experimenting. You're trying new things, and I think that it's very good for all of us to get out of our comfort zone. You know, like. 
I like mysteries, but I don't read Agatha Christie every day. I open myself up, up to an occasional novel because it's more interesting, right? Plus, Agatha Christie always ends in the same way, and I usually guess who the murderer was. Um, but you have to expand yourself and your interests. And, you know, oh, cheers. Nice mimosa. Ooh. Yeah, Whoa, -ho -ho. Mimosa. I didn't, I missed out on this boat. Okay. Yeah, you gotta get I didn't a know we were going to have that type of morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's okay. really about, yeah. So it's really about when you hire me, you get an outsider's view that, like I said, you know, I care about my clients like a mom, but I'm not your mom. Yeah. And I'm like your friend, but I'm not your friend. So it's a business model with compassion. So you don't get that from your parents. You don't get that from your friends. Your friends care about you and they have a passion for you, but they don't have the business model. And their advice isn't always smart. Just like I see with like divorces, you know, friends are like, oh yes, you know, screw him That's on the nice. house, you know, don't return the kids, whatever. You know, it's like, now that was bad advice. Oh my God. So, you know, you wouldn't, you probably wouldn't set your own foot if you broke it. You probably wouldn't do your own taxes unless you really knew how to do it. Well, why would you date on your own? You don't divorce on your own. You get an attorney, you get smart, you get the right people in place so that you don't make mistakes. And that's what I am. I'm like the accountability partner, but you know, I'm on fire to what? In relationships. And yeah, relationships. I'm on fire for like helping people find them or keep them. Well, so that's what that's I do. Amazing. I already know that in the future, we're going to be talking about potentially, unless you're totally against this, um, polyamorous folks who, instead of detaching, I guess, from number 17, they'll yeah. just add them to the polycule and just say, okay, well, I guess you're just going to be a partner now. And sometimes right. they're cool with it and sometimes they're not. Right. Uh, but I... Oh, yeah. I curious to hear how you feel about it because it's been all the rage online um but people have been doing it for a long time it's just i think now it's just getting to mainstream media uh, that more and more people are doing it and um do that next time yeah man right polyamory because we can and jen <laughs> we do what we do because we can all right Well, and so after you've dated the 20 people that you discard. Now okay. you have the practice and now we get serious. This is where the rubber meets the road. Yes. The first 20 is practice. Meet someone, learn something, get out of your comfort zone, learn how to start a conversation, learn how to divert a difficult conversation learn how to engage somebody who's not talkative and then leave. You are practicing with these 20 people. They are your guinea pigs. They are your guinea pigs because I also coach on what you say, what you don't say, what you do, what you don't do. How long is your date? Where is your date? What do you wear? What do you say? I even text my clients. If it's been 40 minutes, I'm like, you got five more minutes. Get out of there. Yep. In less than an hour. You got to date somebody. Oh yeah. yeah. It's a coffee date. It's, Can we keep a conversation going? Is there chemistry? Because I may think you're super cute and I might like how you sound on the phone, but when we get together, it's like, eh, yeah, flat yeah. Line. you don't smell good. It's not happening. Could, but see, it could be that. It could be that, right? Or you forgot to ask somebody, are you a smoker? And then they smell like, you know, like they just came out of a cigar bar. Like, I don't care for that smell, you know? <laughs> I don't care if you smoke a cigar, but don't do it in a closed In, in a enclosed car, you know? Oh but, yeah, I can make or break. A but you really are, but, you, but you're totally right about the smell. I actually didn't even think about that. Oh yeah, pheromones, like a, within one sniff, I'll know if, you're gonna ha if it's gonna happen or not. It's like, it's like oh, mm, no, that's not a smell that I can, from an evolutionary standpoint, right. mate I with. Agree. No, it's true though. Yeah. Like, it's funny um, that you put that up. I didn't even think about that. But you so, wouldn't know that till you meet them, see? Do you recommend that your people then date the 20 people and then go back to one of those 20 and be like, okay, I kind of like this one more? No. Six months later, maybe, but they need to explain to each of the 20 people, I'm new to this. You know, it's uncharted water for me. I've hired a coach and yeah. I am working to find the right connection for me and I'm not going to stop along the way. I'm not going to smell it. No, stop and smell the roses. I need to date a lot of people. 
if there's someone that you have a particular connection with, um, then I allow them to circle back and have a conversation with them and just say, look, I really liked you, but I need my space to like keep looking for a while. If you're still available, great. You know, it's like that stupid thing you would see on the bathroom stalls. You know, if it, you know, if it's meant to be, like whatever that let them go. If it's meant to be, they'll come a lot back. of knowledge from the bathroom stalls. Yeah, what's that one? I'm like I don't know. Listen, in the in the interest of time, because yeah, we are officially at the one hour point. Uh, as always, talking to you, Judith, and talking to the community with you yeah. feels like a five minute situation, but it's not. Or like when we call each other at one in the morning and then we talk till three. <laughs> That's right. I know. I better stay. For no reason. We're just talking. I think that in these times of quarantine, it's yeah. important that we continue to reach out to our friends because intimacy yep. is important to some of us. Right. Um, some people right. just need to check in, check in on your extroverted friends, check in on your introverted friends, especially. Exactly. Um, but... Uh, you know, continue FaceTiming, continue using all the tools that we've set up so far for people to communicate. I'm guessing from what you're saying is that you're saying no sex from Pretty those much. 20 whole dates. Yeah. I think because the thing is, that's the last thing you want to judge somebody on. First, you just need to see if you have a chemistry and mm -hmm. you don't, you know, the thing is, people attach that way. And so it's not really fair to the other person. When you're working with me, it's like, well, I'm already telling you that you're gonna like, you're gonna, you're gonna try to have real conversations with five or six people every week. Like you're not meeting yeah. with all of them, but you're gonna be learning how to engage over the phone and FaceTime. Yeah. Um, so it's not fair to that person that's like, wow, like I had this amazing night. And then you're like, yeah, but Coach Judith has me moving on. They're gonna feel like, Ma'am, bam, thank you, ma'am. Like, I don't think it's right for either men or women to do that because for you anyway, when you're my client, because, you know, this is a numbers game and you just left somebody in the dust who feels like you just used them and you had a one night stand. I mean, if everybody has that mentality and everybody, you don't know if one of these people is going to be like psycho on you afterward, they're going to stalk you, they're going to be pissed at you for not seeing them again because they gave their heart body and soul to you for an entire night it's very <laughs> risky for so many reasons yeah you know you just sure. don't know plus the thing is like you know i mean i'm assuming that you're talking about someone that you don't know that well like in this first 20 meetings or whatever probably um, yeah you know i'm kind of like practicing safe dating and like what you do later on once we figure out who that person is that you're going to single in with uh then that's that's fine you know, if you have to have the other thing, just find some friend with benefits, but that's not someone that you're going to date and settle down with. So right. if you're looking to settle down with somebody, um, that's a whole different process. Right. So you guys heard it here first. Listen to Judith. Make sure all your friends with benefits are in line and ready for the quarantine and you're just willing to, to get infected with you. Uh, but, you know, you don't, you just don't want to attach to them yeah. necessarily. Yeah, attach, attach. I appreciate and can be done. And for some people, you know, try to do that until you should not, or until you don't feel like it anymore. Or if you find yourself getting attached, because that happens too. Right, right. And we'll talk more about like people being ready for, I'm taking notes, uh, people yeah. being ready or not. Um, you know, like Jess earlier was on and she said, you know, I know a lot of people, like, what do you do with people that don't feel like they're ready or they're afraid? I'm like, I don't take them on as a client. Right. We just, no, start. I'm like, I only work with people that are ready. Like if you're ready to do this, it's like, it's like saying, are you ready to take a trip? Okay. Well, you know, I'm a little nervous of airplanes. Well, you're probably not ready then. You know, you got to get over that. So. Well, it's there you thing. have it, folks. It's a ride. It's Coach a ride. Judith. That's right. Coach Judith. Yeah, that's right. You got it. Date dating. as many people as you want. <laughs> right. Dating's fun and you will date a lot of people and you, I can guarantee it's fun. Here's what it is, Jen. This is what I'm doing. I am guaranteeing my clients who have tried dating or, or they've been married and now they're divorced and they haven't dated in a long time. I can guarantee that they will have quality dates within five to six months they will be meeting decent people that aren't cheaters um you know that aren't like 
you know, don't have like, you know, lawsuits against them, that they will be meeting quality people. They will. I don't promise that you're going to meet Mr. and Mrs. Wright by the sixth month, but you will be dating decent, you know, good people. Because that's what I'm doing in this process. Perfect. And if you were to need a divorce, Judith goes to court with you, which I appreciate. Because I know anytime people have to go to court, anxieties are high. They don't want to do it. Sometimes people avoid uh, either uh, obtaining police support or actually filing for divorce because they're concerned about the finances or just right. doing it by themselves. It's an incredibly difficult right. process. I, I don't want to do it by myself for sure. I know people don't, they don't like that. Exactly. But so thank you so much for everything that you do. Oh. I think it's an incredibly valuable service and thank you for yeah. teaching the rest of us. That's right. How to attach and, and just, and uh, you know, detach. That's right. Right. On, off, on, off. <laughs> on, off. I love Green that. This is the first time you said that. I know. Like that? Okay. So listen, be well, be healthy. And uh, this was a lot of fun. And uh, well, we can see where you work, but people can get me uh, on my website, judithjameson.org. J-A-M-E-S-O-N. Jameson, like the Irish whiskey. A lot of people drinking Irish whiskey right now. So anyway, <laughs> until next time. Yes. Until next time. <laughs> Thank you, Judith. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. Find a date worth keeping. Ooh. Try. Right. All right. I'm hanging up. Bye. <laughs>